Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I purchased this dresser for $20 at a state sale recently, and here's the story. In 1936, in rural America, more specifically rural Wisconsin, a boy was born to the wife of a young farmer. The boy was the firstborn of three children and would grow up on the farm miles from any major city. The family challenges and hardships on the farm taught him valuable lessons at an early age. And as the family grew, the boy helped his father build additions to the family home, as well as the necessary buildings to grow the farm. This experience generated an interest in architectural design. And at the age of 18, he moved 40 miles from the family farm to the big city, Madison, Wisconsin. There he attended the University of Wisconsin, studying architecture at a time when another well-known architect in Wisconsin had already established a name for himself. You may have heard of him. During those young, impressionable years at the university, the student met a young woman who was studying to be a teacher. They were married and settled back in rural Wisconsin, just a few miles from a small Wisconsin town where she was a teacher at a small elementary school. During the early years of their marriage, he set out to build their family home on 40 acres where he would grow crops to continue supporting the family while she continued to teach at the elementary school. During the peak of the mid-century, many designers were influenced by a more minimalistic approach using earth tones, organic shapes, and clean lines. In many ways, the design of his own home closely reflected that of a much larger home less than 100 miles away, Taliesin, on a much smaller scale, of course. Over the next few years, this man worked from home while his wife made the daily commute to town to teach at the elementary school. He quickly made a name for himself, designing homes, churches, and schools outside the traditional norms or the limitations of the era. Due to the hardships early in their marriage, the man and his wife purchased used early 20th century furniture to finish their newly built home. This dresser is one of those pieces. Although they weren't able to afford new furniture for their home, they purchased used furniture and encouraged their young children to choose their own designs for these pieces. This dresser was placed in the oldest daughter's bedroom, and this is the color scheme that she chose, proving that painting furniture is not a new trend. With the new paint scheme, this dresser served as a staple in that bedroom for many years to follow, until today, where this dresser will avoid the landfill and receive a new lease on life for the next generation. And if a new family purchases this and paints it once again for the same reasons, that's okay. There are more important things in life than worrying about how a piece of furniture should or shouldn't be refinished. For this dresser, I chose not to do a full restoration and I'll remove most of the paint, but not all of it. For the damage, I want as much of the damage to show as possible. This is part of the story.
As I attempt to remove the paint from this dresser, I'll use several different methods, but for today's video, I won't explain all of those methods. I have several videos on my channel where I discuss those in greater detail, but just know that the paint was difficult to remove, as you'll see, and unfortunately, this took much longer than expected. This dresser has sat in an empty bedroom for the last 30 or 40 years, so my goal for this project is just to give it a new finish, hopefully use it once again, whether that's me or a new owner, I'm not sure yet, but I just want to get the casters working, remove the paint, and I don't want to make any alterations to the original structure in case one day someone wants to do a true restoration. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring and creative classes for anyone who loves learning. When I first started using Skillshare, I was excited to see that I could just type in whatever topic I was looking to learn more about. In this case, furniture, and I'm able to select beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And this brings up several classes to choose from. I chose a class specifically about stripping furniture, which is very appropriate for this video. I'm able to watch these videos while I'm working in the shop and I feel that I always learn something from each one of these videos. I've also been able to take several classes to learn more about the camera equipment that I'm using for my YouTube channel. As most of you know, I'm always trying to find new ways to be creative on this channel and one of my favorite classes is one that I just started and it's by Emma Gannon. She discusses several tips for finding ways to be creative with your business or whatever it is that you're doing. Check out the link in the description and let me know what you're interested in learning more about. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. I'll finish this story in a moment, but this man, the architect in the story, this was his cabinet, and towards the end of this video, I'll show you what he left inside. If it isn't obvious already, this dresser is mostly oak. It does have veneer on the top and the sides. I would say the normal rules of restoration don't apply for this piece since I'm not worried about getting all the paint out of the wood fibers. And I suppose for a true purist, this is not the right way to do it, but this is the look that I'm going for. As I'm working to remove the rest of the paint, I hope you'll consider following me on Instagram at Mad City Furniture or Facebook at Mad City Modern. 
I am excited to be a part of the Big Brothers Big Sisters charity auction again this year and I believe I have an exciting piece for that project so hit the notification bell on this channel so you don't miss that video coming up very soon. I often receive comments regarding how clean my workspace is and I don't do this often so this is what the workspace really looks like in the middle of a project. You may have seen this hammer on the channel many times and the reason I use this one is because I've had this since I was 8 years old. I chose a very simple finish for this dresser. I'll be using a simple dark paste wax. The purpose for this will be to help tone down some of the paint that's still left in the fibers. And it should also help bring some of the wood grain back to life. I will be linking all of the products used in this video in the video description below. This is the part where I do kindly ask if you feel that I've earned your subscription to the channel that you'll consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that thumbs up, and hitting the notification button so you don't miss any future videos. I appreciate all of your support and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Several years ago, this architect lost his dear wife to a battle with cancer, and in 2022, at the age of 88, this man died peacefully in his sleep. To respect the privacy of his family, the name will not be mentioned, but his legacy is all around us, in the homes and churches and schools throughout Wisconsin and beyond. 
It's not just a theory of mine that many of our furniture pieces are more than just objects that occupy space in every corner of our homes. Thousands of you have shared your own memories on this channel, and I read the comments and your stories go beyond a simple statement such as, I have a beautiful dresser in my home. You share memories, good and bad, and how these pieces influenced you without ever understanding the impact until recently. So as the new generations create their own memories, let us not dismiss the differences in style preferences, but embrace the similarities in the memories that we cherish. One of the most valuable experiences we can have as humans is to share our stories with one another, to listen to one another and respect our differences. Thanks for listening, goodbye for now, and I'll see you in the comments section.